Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video is going to be looking at two dot points, a theory dot point which states compare the processes of diffusion and osmosis, and a first-hand investigation uh, dot point where we'll be looking at demonstrating the difference between osmosis and diffusion. So let's start off by having a look at what diffusion is. So the definition of diffusion is the passive movement of molecules from an area where there is a high concentration of molecules to an area where there is a low concentration of these molecules. So you'll recall that we talked about the difference between passive and active movement in a previous lesson, and we said that passive movement doesn't require any energy. So diffusion happens all the time as long as there is a concentration gradient or a difference in concentration in different areas. So when we have an area where there's lots of particles, so here the little green circles represent our solute. So our solute is dissolved in our solvent. Here we have lots of solute particles and down here we have none. So there's a high concentration at this end of our, uh, our vessel and a low concentration down this end. And what's going to happen is these solute particles will then move from this area where there's lots to the area where there's not many until there is an equal number of solute particles throughout the whole vessel. Now, let's have a look at osmosis. So osmosis and diffusion are very similar. However, we need to note there's a few very important differences. So osmosis is the passive movement of water molecules from an area where there is a high concentration of water to, where there, to an area where there is a low concentration of water across a semi-permeable membrane. So firstly, the similarity we can automatically see is that osmosis is also passive. Another similarity we can see is that there is movement from a high concentration to a low concentration. However, the big difference here is that osmosis is only the movement of water. Okay, so when we have a high concentration of water and that water is moving to a low concentration of water, osmosis is taking place. The other important thing that we need to note is that osmosis occurs across a semi-permeable membrane. So if you're asked to define the term osmosis, you need to specifically mention that it is the movement of water from a high concentration to low concentration. And you also have to specifically mention that it is across a semi-permeable membrane. So we've been speaking about semi-permeable membranes over the last few lessons, looking at the cell membrane. So when water moves in and out of the cell across that semi-permeable membrane, it is the process of osmosis that is taking place. So here we can see a picture of uh, basically a cell membrane. So these squares here are to represent the cell membrane. On the outside of the cell, we have a watery solution. And on the inside of the cell, we have a salty solution. And what happens is because there's more water particles outside the cell than inside, these water particles will move across the cell membrane again to try to equalize the amount of water on either side of the cell membrane. This here is just a little cute um, cartoon to show that when we change the concentration of water by adding things such as salt, sugar, basically anything that will dissolve in water will change the concentration of water and therefore water particles will move either in or out of the cell and that's why slugs will uh, shrivel up and die because if you put salt on them the water is all drawn out of the slug and they dehydrate. So that brings us to our different types of solutions. So all solutions can be divided into three different types, hypertonic, isotonic and hypotonic. So a hypertonic solution is one whose concentration of solutes such as salt is greater outside the cell. And as a result, as we can see here, if there's a greater concentration of water inside the cell, so there's more salt outside, less water, the water will leave the cell and the cell will end up shrinking. Okay, And obviously this is going to have a major impact on the cells, especially plant cells, uh, because the plant cell, if they lose a lot of water, the cell will then becomes, uh, isn't held out by the pressure of the water and the cell becomes what we know know as flaccid and that's when we get the limpy uh, sort of wilting of plants. An isotonic solution, iso usually refers to the same, so isotonic same concentration. So 
what happens when there is an iso- when cells are placed into an isotonic solution? There is no net movement of water in or out of the cells. So what happens is the cells remain the same size. So this is what we ideally want all the time. So that's why when we're thirsty, we drink water. When we've drunk too much water, we need to get rid of it in order to maintain that concentration of water around our cells. And the last type of solution is a hypotonic solution. So these are solutions where the concentration of solutes is lower outside the cell. So there's more water outside the cell than inside the cell. What happens here is water will rush into the cell and basically animal cells in particular will swell and may swell to the point where they will burst. So plant cells, remember, have the cell wall around the cell membrane, so they don't often uh, burst, but we can see sometimes plants that have really filled uh, cells with water because they're sort of bulging. However, with animal cells, if we have too much water rushing in, there's no protective outer membrane or outer cell wall and they can burst. So this is just a little Venn diagram to show the similarities and differences between osmosis and diffusion. So as we said, osmosis is the movement of water from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water across a semi-permeable membrane. Whereas diffusion is the movement of all substances, uh, liquids or gases, uh, solids obviously can move a little bit differently, but diffusion can relate to both solids and gas, uh, sorry, liquids and gases. So from a high concentration of substances to a low concentration of substances and does not require a semi-permeable membrane. So the similarities between the two, however, is as we said, movement is passive, so no energy is needed, and it takes place until equilibrium is reached. So what we mean by equilibrium is that there's equal number of particles or the concentration is equal everywhere. So we need to do a first-hand investigation to observe and compare the react or the processes of diffusion and osmosis. So we'll be doing a demonstration in class to have a look at the diffusion of potassium permanganate crystals in water and having a look at how those substances move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And then what you'll be doing is setting up an osmosis investigation. So that should say osmosis investigation setup, sorry, not diffusion. So the independent variable that we will be looking at will be the concentration of our solution. So we're going to be creating an hypotonic, isotonic, and hypotonic solution. The dependent variable, so the thing that we are going to measure, is the percentage weight change measured by weighing a piece of celery before and after we place it into the solutions, obviously with an electronic scale. And a few things that we need to control in order to make sure we have a fair test is the same volume of solution, the same size piece of celery, and the celery from the same stalk. So those kinds of things will make sure that it's just the concentration of the solution that we're placing the celery in that's going to have an impact on our results. So what you'll do is you'll set up uh, four beakers with 40 mils of solutions being distilled water, 1% salt solution and 10% salt solution. You will weigh them first, place a piece of celery into each of those beakers, and we're going to leave them for 20 minutes. And what we should see is once the 20 minutes is up, we can take the pieces of celery out and reweigh them, and we should see some differences in uh, the percentage weight loss between the three pieces of celery, depending on the type of solution that they're placed into. So we'll then be able to use this formula to calculate the percentage loss. So we need to calculate first of the difference in weight. So the final weight take away the initial weight divided by the initial weight or the original weight and times by 100 gives us a percentage weight loss. And then we can compare the percentage weight losses of the three different uh, pieces of celery. We can gather results from other groups in order to have a little bit of repetition. And we can have a look at how the different solutions have impacted on the pieces of the celery. And we can relate that back to our three different solutions. So we'll be able to identify then which of the solutions were hypotonic, isotonic, and uh, hypertonic, as well as then use that uh, those results and that information in order to discuss how osmosis has taken place in our celery. And that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, so thank you for watching.